Hey, what's going on? Um, want to do a quick kind of in the middle video of uh, where I'm at on this project because I think it's kind of helpful to see uh, kind of the steps here. So first off, uh, this is the room that we finished already and uh, that's a built-in grate that we ended up uh, finishing with the floor. It's also white oak. So one of the project pieces I've just done is started to rough out the size of uh, ventilation openings. So here's one of them. And uh, I got my grate and I cut that out. Probably gonna make it a little larger when I get to the final piece. But you know, you kind of have to start thinking about that stuff uh, as you go along, because you have to kind of have that planned out. Um, so what I'm doing right now, I don't know if you can see these pieces, uh, these are carpet shims. So I went and picked up about $110 worth of carpet shims and that's what they look like. And they come in different different sizes. These are a little bit, bit thicker. And then, uh, let me see if I can find one. Eh, of course, they're right behind the scale here, behind the uh, level. These are thinner ones. Um, so you can see they come in kind of different thicknesses, as well as I've got a whole bunch of different types of pieces of wood here. Uh, I even have some thin plywood that I was using to make uh, cabinets with that I don't need anymore. So basically, um, what what you're going to do is, or what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, kind of figure out what thicknesses allow me to transition from the um, OSB uh, flooring once it gets too thin in order to get over to the area where I need to kind of feather it out. Now this this isn't really done final here, but this just gives you an idea. So for example, I need another piece under here, kind of get it a little bit more level. And you can use shims and glue and whatever else you can come up with. Um, you just want to make sure you have a nice solid uh, underlayment. Um, you can see here, for example, I've got a little high point and I probably have to sand that down. Um, I've been using this thing, my Festool fan. And this is a RAS, RAS, what is it? RAS 115 rotary sander. It's basically an angle grinder with 25 grit sandpaper. Um, so I use that tool to kind of smooth out the material. Um, what's kind of cool though is, so this is an area where you've got the OSB, then you've got your uh, carpet shims, and then I've just set some wood on top but what's kind of neat is, I'll show you here. This is just roughed in. It's obviously not done and completed, but so we'll see what it's at. So 0 0.1, um, that's really a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. There's still a lot of work needs to be done. What I've seen is I've got kind of a high point here where I have my staples. Uh, that I used on my carpet shims and you can actually kind of feel a little high point so I'll probably knock those down and sand them uh, again I'm using a ton of glue to kind of put it all together but uh, yeah I'm pretty happy um, it's gonna be a little bit of a nightmare when I get to that corner on how I have to do that but um, yeah so just give you an idea what it looks like as I go along so going from rough floor to these uh, two by four purlin or shims or whatever you want to call them, micro joists to the OSB to roughing in the uh, finished area for, for grates. For example, these grates have to kind of think ahead on that stuff as you do it. Uh, in fact, this is the grate that I'm going to use right here. You can see it's all ready to go here. Um, so you kind of have to plan that out and then finally putting the shims in and then uh, just laying some wood just to see how it looks and getting it pretty darn flat. So, um, you know, it's uh, definitely uh, a lot of work, but this isn't an easy project trying to level off a floor. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show this is a kind of a good view too here. So you can see the old floor. Get down here, grade. You can see the old floor. 
dropping down and the new floor coming up to the correct height. And I, I really like this shot here because you can start to see how it's just going to blend right into the uh, other room. So definitely uh, something you could do. Um, it, you know, I mostly I'm just posting this video because I want to make sure I have uh, somebody else out there doing it. Uh, a couple things I want to point out. Um, obviously, I didn't run my my uh, OSB plywood all up to the edge. I left an area to overlap because uh, you have to have something to screw in on. The other thing is if you're doing OSB plywood, you definitely want to leave eighth inch uh, gap all around it. So that's all on purpose. Um, you do not want to put this stuff right up next to each other, particularly anywhere might get moisture, like there's going to be a fridge there. You want to make sure you have, you know, the, the proper expansion joints. Um, this stuff has an expansion joint built into the area that has a lip, but then on the ends you have to leave an expansion joint. I went crazy with the screws. Um, definitely don't need that many screws, but uh, like I said, I, I wanted to really tie that together and no squeaks. So, so yeah, starting to get there, work our way out to these corners and then uh, post a video once I've got the, uh, pretty much the whole area in and, and uh, put together. So hopefully this helps somebody out there.